Cameras have been so good for so long at this point that it's pretty safe to say there's no such thing as a bad one, at least as far as the major brands are concerned, because there are definitely some off-brand weird things out there that are not great. But of all the cameras I've gotten to work with over the years, I've never personally used a Nikon. And that's about to change because I've got the chance to borrow a Nikon Z9 and I can't wait to see how good it is. Hi. It's me, from the intro. Turns out I messed up at the first possible opportunity with the Z9 because I filmed my first impression and unboxing and experience with the camera for over an hour, and it was great. And then I saved the footage very carefully and very meticulously for several weeks until I deleted the main file from the main camera, leaving only this weird secondary angle with no audio. So let me do my best to try and recap what happened here. I explained that this video is not sponsored. Nikon reached out to me and wanted to know if I wanted to try the Z9 as somebody who's never used a Nikon camera before. They sent along this filmmaking kit, which was pretty cool. It included two lenses, the camera and a cage and charger, memory card, basically everything I needed to get started. And it came in this really slick yellow Pelican case that had a secret code that I had to unlock and it made me feel really cool. So there's no money involved. I don't get to keep the camera. I am sending it back as soon as I'm done making this video. But as soon as I opened it, there are a few things I noticed right away. The build quality is amazing, which it should be. It's a really expensive camera. $5,500 is the MSRP. It should be extremely well built. And it's also a really, really big camera, which I like. It feels great and it has a lot of heft and weight to it. It's covered in buttons. Basically every button can be reassigned to what you need. It has definitely more buttons and dials than any camera that I've ever used. I also noticed right away that the battery is massive and in the time that I've been using the camera, you really don't have to worry about running out of battery ever. It lasts forever. It's amazing and they sent two of them too. So it was like unlimited power. So after this, what would have been really fun scene that I messed up, my goal was to just use the Nikon Z9 as much as possible over the next, what ended up being 70 plus days. This is my first full day with the camera. So last night I spent a long time going through every menu setting and also put it in the whole like cage. So it's, it's a big, it's a big one. So I'm just out playing around taking photos right now with the 50 millimeter. One thing I really like is that in the menu, when you push the help icon, you actually get help. Like it actually explains what is happening and what this setting means. With Sony cameras, if, if there's something that's like card format and you click the help icon, it just says formats the card. One thing that I don't like so far, which is very nitpicky, is the shutter sound of still photos. So this is the shutter sound. It's, it's just an electronic sound. It's like, it feels kind of like you're taking a photo with a phone. It's just not as satisfying as hearing an actual chunk or feeling an actual shutter sound. I shudder at the thought. I'm filming with the Z9 right now with the 24 to 70 2.8 lens at f2.8. And I was also using the Z9 for the green screen part before. So I'm trying to use this camera as much as possible while making this video, but this is not, definitely not, a full-on technical review. If you want a really in-depth technical review, it's hard to find anything better than Gerald and Dunn's video about the Nikon Z9, so I'll put a link to that in the description. Mine is much more the journey of what the heck is Nikon all about and is it great? And the answer is yes, it is actually pretty great. Nikon specifically calls this their flagship camera. So as you would expect from a camera with that label, it excels at pretty much everything. It's amazing for photos, it's amazing for videos, it has a 45 megapixel sensor. Although I should be honest with my workflow, I'm mainly focused on the video features and it does have 8K capabilities, but my workflow is really not set up for 8K. That's, it's pretty intense. However, just for reference, here's an example of an 8K clip. And yes, this is on a 4K timeline, but you can see then compared to a 4K clip of that same shot side by side, if there's any difference, there probably aren't a lot of amazing reasons right now, compelling reasons or even practical ones to film everything you do 
in 8K, but it can definitely be helpful at times, especially if you plan to do a lot of cropping or zooming or visual effects work in editing after filming. That extra resolution really does go a super long way. But beyond 8K, the 4K capabilities of this camera are more than okay. In fact, they're pretty darn awesome. I've had a lot of fun experimenting with and just testing out the Z9, but I've also been mixing in footage from it into other stuff that I've made in the time that I've had it. And it's been really great overall, even though that does mean mixing camera systems, which can sometimes, you know, be a little bit difficult to do. The sensor inside the Z9 is actually manufactured by Sony. And so what I kind of thought was, well, maybe that means if you take a Nikon and a Sony and you put them side by side, it'll be very easy to match them. But of course, there's a lot more that goes into it than the sensor itself. So even though it is a Sony sensor, it's being run through all kinds of different components and software and everything to create the look and to process and handle that information from the sensor in the way that Nikon wants specifically. So if you take a Nikon camera with a Sony sensor and a Sony camera with a Sony sensor and put them side by side with the same settings, they aren't necessarily going to match up perfectly right away. And that's not a bad thing. That's just my reminder that different camera systems process colors differently. And to be honest, I don't personally get too worked up or pay too much attention to things like color science because I just go with what you like. Like, do you like the way that these cameras handle colors? Cool. If there's a camera or a system that helps you get the results that you need as quickly and easily as possible, cool. That's the one to go with. And just for reference, you have been watching me on the Nikon Z9 this entire time, but now I have set up my Canon EOS R and my Sony FX3. So now you have Canon, Nikon, Sony, and you can kind of see they're all at the same settings at 24 millimeters, f2.8. And you can sort of see without any processing or effects how each system handle, I don't know where to look, how each system handles colors differently. So again, there's no processing or anything, but if you look at you know some of the bright colors I have here, like blue on the walls, a lot of companies process blues differently. Skin tones, of course, this is just default picture profile from every camera. And it's worth noting that the EOS R is filming at 1080 because it does not do full frame 4K, but that's not really relevant here because we're looking at colors and not resolution. And now let's focus a little bit on autofocus because according to Nikon's product page for the Z9, the Z9's autofocus is the best in the world. I don't have a scientific way of proving if it's the best in the world and Lord knows I don't wanna do the testing and take the time to figure that out, but it is really, really good. I have zero complaints or issues with the autofocus on the Z9 because again, that's what you would expect from a flagship camera. There's no way that Nikon could offer a model like this at this price point without it having incredible autofocus. So it's honestly not even something I thought about. As soon as I took the camera out of the box, I just started using it, kind of assuming that it was going to have great autofocus and it did. It never let me down. It's It's been a non-issue, which is kind of the ultimate test sometimes of how good something is. If you just forget it's there, that probably means it's doing an amazing job. And that's kind of been my experience with the Z9 in general is that it's just been a genuine delight to use. It's really big. It's a, it's way bigger than my other cameras, but it's supposed to be. It's, it's like, you know, the Canon R3. It's a big grip on both sides kind of camera. So it's hefty, especially when you put it in the cage and everything. I love the buttons. They're super tactile and clicky and just easy to use. And then the screen and the menus are awesome. As someone who's brand new to the system, I wanted to see if I could figure it out without having to refer to the instruction manual. And it was really not a problem at all going through all of the menu settings and just figuring everything out because it explains things really, really well. And because the touch screen is so responsive, it's really easy to navigate through the menu menus just using touch and changing all the settings. In my time with the Z9, there are really only two or three things that I've personally listed as cons or Nikons, if you will. The first one actually is the screen, even though I just said how great the screen was. The screen itself is really awesome, but the mount that it's on is a little strange. It's way too complicated, I think, and it's not delicate or anything. It's pretty strong and well-built. The screen is able to kind of tilt and pivot in a lot of different orientations, which makes it super versatile, especially for things like photos. It just seems a little more complicated than it would need to be. And there are a lot of times where I found like it sort of just like pulls out and I'm constantly like pushing it back in because then I end up looking at it like a weird angle and it's hard to frame things up. And 
No matter how versatile it is in changing its orientation, it does not flip forward, so you never have a front-facing screen. And another Nikon con, kind of like I mentioned earlier, is the shutter sound, which is just so weak and meek. And just for reference, here's my Sony a7 IV. This is also a mirrorless camera, a full-frame mirrorless camera. And here's the shutter sound. And you can feel the shutter like actually clicking when you do that. So you always know like, yep, I definitely took a photo. There's no mistaking it. It's not just a vanity like aesthetic thing. Oh, I don't like the way the shutter sounds. But for me, it's actually become kind of confusing to tell when I'm actually taking a photo. And that's where the problem is. It can be hard to differentiate when it's just locking focus and when it's actually taking a photo. So to get around that, I find myself with the Z9 just taking a lot of extra photos instead of trying to hit like that one moment or take a couple, I'm just like taking tons of photos because I wanna make sure that I'm actually capturing the right moment that I mean to. And with a camera that has a still photo shutter speed of up to 120 frames per second, that means you could end up with a lot of extra photos. And I'm not saying that wrong. I'm not talking about video 120 FPS. I am talking about still photos. The reason that the Z9 doesn't have that satisfying mechanical shutter click is because there is no mechanical shutter. It's fully electronic shutter, which lets it have that insane speed. The camera does have a sensor cover which I really like, kind of like the EOS R and some of the newer Sony cameras do, where it looks like the shutter covers the sensor. But in the case of the Z9, it's not the shutter. Like this is the camera's shutter covering the sensor, but the Z9 just has a sensor cover built into it. And I'm really glad they went above and beyond to include that, even though the camera itself doesn't rely on a mechanical shutter. And it does tie into the third thing that I found that I don't personally like about the Z9, again, personal, is because of those speeds, and all the data that the camera is capturing in 8K footage, it uses CF Express cards, which means you can't just pop them into, you know, the SD card slot on your computer. So you always need to use an external card reader with the camera to transfer the footage. Absolutely not a big deal if it's something you've been used to, but if it's not something you're used to and you, you just travel with regular SD cards, and you just pop those into your computer, now you always have to remember to have one other thing with you, a card reader, so that way you can connect it and get fast transfer speeds. But overall, I'm super impressed. Nikon was really kind of late to the game when it comes to mirrorless cameras for video, but it seems like they have really done a good job. I know that the Z series tends to get pretty favorable reviews. I've never used any of the other cameras, but as a flagship model, I definitely do see why Nikon is very proud of the Z9. It seems like they've taken the time to learn from the mistakes of other companies and listen to customers and listen to feedback and try to deliver something that kind of addresses all of that. A hefty price tag, but I think it's been worth the wait, especially if you're someone who is a Nikon shooter and you've been waiting and waiting to upgrade to like a mirrorless system. And maybe if you do have a different system and it's just not meeting all of your needs, it's really great that there is another actual viable alternative out there. So just for fun, I wanted to switch angles and use the 50 millimeter lens at f1.2, which is an absurdly shallow depth of field. It's, a, it's the shallowest depth of field I've ever used. This 50 millimeter lens is also completely insane. Look at the size of it compared to the 50 millimeter f1.8 lens that I normally use, which is a super cheap, it's the cheapest lens Sony makes. And one other thing that I should have mentioned when I was talking about the screen is even even though the screen doesn't flip forward, so I'm using an external monitor, the Z9 has no problem outputting display info on the back of the screen and an external monitor. So you can mix and match. Do you want your external display to have all the stuff on it? Do you just want the back screen? Do you want both of them? The back screen does not turn off when I have it connected to an external monitor with display info on it. So even though I have been able to use the Nikon Z9 for a pretty decent length of time, I definitely have not been able to test out every functionality of the camera. I haven't been able to put it in every situation. I, there's times where it's an expensive camera and I just don't want to take it somewhere. Like I am financially responsible for it until I return it and I don't want to be. So, you know, there are certain things I didn't get to try out with it. And also I fully know there are features that I'm just not using to their full capability. And the goal here is not to showcase every feature of this incredibly feature-packed camera, but to say, hey, I've never used 
this system of camera before. What's it like and how does it compare to everything else that's out there? And it is really, really impressive. I am kind of working on the assumption that a lot of things that are great about the Z9 do also translate to the other cameras in that series, like the Z6. Obviously, they're not gonna have all the features of a flagship model, but the same way that something like the Sony a7S III or even the a7 IV share features with the A1, which is a flagship camera. Ultimately though, and the whole point of even doing this is I wanted to put to the test the claim that I've made so many times in other videos that there is no such thing as a bad camera. And I, I stand by that. There are definitely cameras that are better suited for certain workflows than others. Everybody has personal preference. That's totally a thing and totally a valid reason. But in terms of cameras, especially at the mid to high end level from any of the major brands, everything is pretty amazing. And most of it just comes down to personal preference. And the Nikon's really great. It's an awesome camera. I definitely recognize that it's a very fortunate thing to have a company like Nikon reach out and say, hey, you just want to try this thing for a while and have fun with it with no obligations? That's pretty cool. If you're not in that very specific situation, I definitely recommend when it comes to something like this or switching camera systems, spending a lot of money on a camera, renting it before you try it, which I've talked about before. This is not a sponsored thing, but I've used lensrentals.com many times myself, and it's been a great way to get like hands-on time with a piece of gear. There are also lots of other services like that. So depending on where you live, if there is a service available that lets you rent a camera, sometimes you could rent an amazing camera for like $100 a week, and then you can actually feel it and use it and see how it works in your workflow, see how it plays with your, you know, your computer or whatever software you're using because there's such an infrastructure with the camera. It's not just the body or even the body and the lens. There's so many other things that go into it and being able to actually physically use something in your workflow is usually the best way to decide if it's something that you actually want to commit to or not. And speaking of things that are worth committing to, thank you to everyone who helps support my channel through Patreon and YouTube channel memberships. And before the video wraps up here, I did not want to title this or frame this as an I'm switching video. And I'm not switching to Nikon. It's a great camera, but I told Nikon that right from the beginning that like I had just spent a year switching to a three Sony camera setup, which I was very happy with. And I didn't want to throw any kind of like wrench into those spokes. So sticking with my Sony cameras, they're amazing. But the Nikon cameras are also amazing. Just because a Sony is good doesn't mean a Nikon is bad and vice versa or a Canon or a Panasonic or a Fuji or whatever. Like everything's amazing. The thing that made me the most excited about making this video is that the people from Nikon are genuinely excited about the Z9 and just talking to them, I could tell how proud of it they are and like they, they're really excited for other people to use it and try it, maybe because they know that they're a little late to the game and so people have sort of established themselves in other systems and they want other people to, to use this thing and it just seems like it's a bunch of people who love cameras and photography and videography and they're excited about the stuff that they made and that's really cool. So even though I'm not gonna be spending, you know, $5,500 on the Nikon Z9 myself, I definitely think it's an amazing camera and it definitely makes me curious about some of the other Nikon cameras and the lenses also are amazing. I've never used Nikon lenses before and they are super good. So after this, it was supposed to be 30 days and it's like 70 or 80 days at this point. But after my time with the Z9, I'm happy to say that the Z9 is divine. All right.